Hello and good evening all. As I have kicked Adobe and their pernicious subscription model to the curb and have yet to decide on a replacement software for photo editing and management, tonight we're pivoting to some lighter fare and we're going to have a bit of story time in which I will read to you a press kit that, after reading it at least ten times before, still makes me laugh and shake my head in equal measure. Actually, I think I may turn this into an occasional video series of cynical looks at concept cars, launching from this video and the hugely impractical Kalani Le Mans prototype that destroyed Amura and Solar Oven its occupants that I talked about back during Oddity Week. Yes, indeed, it's time to talk about the Volvo YCC, or more cumbersomely named, your concept car. A quick bit of background before we begin. Introduced at the Geneva Motor Show in 2004, the YCC was allegedly the first concept car designed for women by women. Or would that be by women for women? Which is an interesting and rather compelling idea in and of itself, but the design choices that the team came up with occasionally seem almost cliché. With an ostensible design remit focused on ergonomics, the nine-strong team nevertheless seems to have exceeded their mandate and considered femininity in all aspects of car design, which we will see shortly. Personally, I think the aesthetics verge on being a little bit too crossovery for my tastes, but I do like the headlamp design and chunky utilitarian front bumper covers. But I also like the look of the Citroën Cactus, an opinion for which I was mocked unremittingly in my consumer decision-making course in grad school, so who am I to judge? And yet still you're watching this video, so apparently you have given me some sort of imputed authority. I'll read the press info packet and hold any comments until the end of each section, unless it's a very short comment or to uh, splice in a piece of footage that I thought would be sarcastically amusing. Anyway, let's begin. Your Concept Car by Women for Modern People Initiative in June 2002 by Women at Volvo Cars, all decisions made by women, targeting the most demanding premium customer, the independent, professional woman. The idea of an all-woman team making all the decisions in the development of a new concept car arose at Volvo in the autumn of 2001. Visiting Volvo at the time for a series of workshops was Marty Barletta, an American expert on female consumer patterns. She claimed... If you meet the expectations of women, you exceed the expectations of men. We're sure it's right, says Camilla Palmeritz, one of the two project managers for the YCC. That's why that thesis has been our guiding light in developing your concept car. In June 2002, Camilla Palmeritz and a small group of colleagues were invited to present their idea to Hans Olaf Olsen, president and CEO of Volvo Car Corporation. He greeted it with enthusiasm. Women form an increasingly important customer group for Volvo cars. In the United States, 54% of all Volvo buyers are women, and the percentage of female customers in Europe is growing steadily, too. This is a fantastic opportunity for us. We can concentrate on the fast-growing group of women customers without losing the men, because I'm certain that our male customers will love this concept car, said Hans Olaf Olsen. If you meet the expectations of women, you exceed the expectations of men. Um... Not sure about that. I think it depends quite a bit. All decisions taken by women. The project management team behind the YCC consists of five women at Volvo Cars, who brought to the project a broad spectrum of experience in various automotive fields. The three chief designers are also women. We wanted to keep the woman's perspective all the way through, says Hans Olaf Olsen. After a series of preliminary studies, the project was given the go-ahead by Volvo Cars management team in December 2002. The team's brief was perfectly clear, a free hand to develop a concept car capable of winning the approval of that most demanding Volvo customer category of all, the independent female professional. Volvo has a long-standing tradition of listening carefully to what women want. As early as the 1980s, a woman's reference group was formed at Volvo. Here, female members of staff are called upon to test and assess new models at a very early stage of their development. Moreover, during the development of the XC90, a woman's focus group was convened in California. All potential buyers of this vehicle type, whose views helped shape the Volvo SUV's distinctive features and functions. If you divide the car buying world into three segments, budget, mid-market, and premium, our customer research shows that the woman buyer in the premium segment is the most demanding of all customer categories, says Maria Widell Christiansen, project manager, design. Women customers in the premium segment want everything that men want in terms of performance, prestige, and style, but they want more besides. 
smart storage solutions. A car that is so easy to get in and out of you now. Good visibility. A car you can personalize. Minimal maintenance. A car that is easy to park. Smart storage. Smart storage goes far beyond where to put your handbag. <laughs> it is a question of what to do with your mobile phone, your keys, your notebook computer, your briefcase, your sports bag for the gym, and so many other things we carry in our cars. The best place for keeping all the things you want on hand in the car is between the front seats, but that is where you normally find the gear lever and handbrake. So we moved them. In the YCC, there are gear levers by the steering wheel, and the parking brake is electronic and integrated. This freed up space for storage in the center console, says Cindy Charwick, who designed the YCC interior. In the center console, you find a shallow compartment for keys, mobile phones, coins, and other small items. This compartment slides back to reveal a deeper one, big enough for a handbag. Another compartment takes a notebook computer, and there is a cool box within reach of the driver's seat, too. A waste paper basket completes the theme of sheer convenience. Most of our target group said they carry a bag in the rear seat far more often than passengers. So we decided to design that area primarily for storage, but instantly convertible to seats for two passengers whenever needed, says Camilla Palmertz. That is why the rear seats resemble cinema seats, normally folded up out of the way until somebody needs them. This frees up large amounts of luggage space in the rear seat, easily accessed through the wide door. Passengers simply lower a seat each as they get in. The YCC is a one-off concept car, a Volvo showcase for sharing bright ideas and solutions with the world. The most popular solutions will be those that stand the best chance of appearing in a future production model. We chose a gullwing door with a modest wingspan to help us show the YCC's interior solutions, says Elna Holmberg, technical project manager. And it brought other advantages. It makes it easy to lift a bag in behind the driver's seat, and it increases your visibility over your shoulder to the side because the B-pillar has been moved towards the rear. And when the door opens upwards, the drop-down door sill rotates simultaneously, so getting in and out is so much easier. A waste paper basket completes the theme of sheer convenience. This is the only part of this section I actually take truck with. I have never, despite several attempts over the years in multiple vehicles and vehicle styles, managed to actually get decent use out of a small bin in a car. At Best I use a paper bag or something for long journeys and take it out when I arrive at my destination, but anything more hard-sided than that just seems to get in the way and usually ends up tossed in the back seat, empty and forgotten for weeks or months on end. On the other hand, I quite appreciate the primary focus of the rear seating area being on cargo storage rather than passenger carriage. Pretty much every car I've ever driven with a combined cabin and storage area from my 928 to various VW wagons have all spent 90 plus percent of their time in my ownership with the rear seats folded down for better cargo capacity. And while this YCC solution is a different solution to the problem, it actually reminds me of a sort of contrapositive of the semi flip down seats you get in a 928, focused on access and ease of use from the front seats rather than as a cargo area extender. Any wide door coupes or three door cars like the Mazda RX-8 or Hyundai Veloster really should have taken lessons from this as I think they were both designed after the fact. An easy car to get in and out of. You know. You know. Easy access to the car interior was high on the list of what the target group wanted. The YCC designers were happy to oblige. When the gull wing door opens, the drop down sill below it opens down out of the way, so you do not need to climb in over it. The ride height is automatically returned to high mode for door opening, a comfortable height for those getting in. For added space, the driver's seat moves back automatically and the steering wheel moves upwards. And the side bolsters on the driver's seat base are lowered out of the way so you can get in more easily too. If you have a lot to carry, you can make the YCC open the door automatically when you reach it. You simply activate auto open using the key before you pick up your bags. Then, when you stand by the rear wheel, the relevant side door will be opened for you. If you go to the back of the car, the tailgate opens instead. Good visibility. Your actual driving position and line of vision is very important for both safety and comfort in reaching all the controls. In the YCC, we have combined ergonomics and line of vision adjustment in our ergo vision system, which we are in the process of patenting, says Elma Holmberg. This is how it works. Your whole body is scanned at the dealership, then the data on your relative proportions height, leg length, arm length, is used to define a driving position just for you. This is stored in digital form on your personal key unit. Once you get into the driver's seat and dock your key on the center console, the seat, steering wheels, pedals, 
head restraint, and seat belt will all be adjusted automatically to suit your build. The result is a recommended, fully personalized driving position with the best line of vision for you. If you want to alter the stored position, you can change the settings of the various car components in the system, then store that set of data on your key unit. The system will warn you if your line of vision is wrong by means of the lenticular hologram, which looks like a stylized eye displayed on the A-pillar between windscreen and door. The exterior design of the car has also been developed specifically to help the driver see better. The bonnet section has been lowered and the fenders have been deliberately brought into sight. Add to this the fact that the rear window extends right to the extremities of the car, and the driver will know exactly where the four corners of the car are, says Anna Rosen, the designer of the YCC exterior. Your whole body is scanned at the dealership, then the data on your relative proportions, height, leg length, arm length, is used to define a driving position just for you. I can, in a sense, appreciate the intent behind this, but between expecting people in general, actually I almost originally said women in particular here, but either way, to go in and get their bodies scanned just so that their seat position can be optimized seems like a bit more complicated than necessary relative to oh, I don't know, buttons on the seat itself, or door if you've picked up a Mercedes. Also, this plan for a lenticular hologram set in the A-pillar at optimal sight line, implying that A, there's only one ideal sight line for all possible drivers of the car, seems unlikely to me, and then B, for those of you unaware, a lenticular hologram is a fancy term for one of those posters or stickers that show two different images when you tilt them slightly different ways. Interestingly, Bhutan released some lenticular postage stamps back in 1967. This, the country that didn't have television until 1999 and still doesn't believe in traffic lights. Uh, additionally, apparently North Korea has been quite fond of lenticular stamps and has had them in continuous production since the 1980s. Odd. They did also design the exterior of the car to improve sight lines through a lower hood and fenders, along with extended window glass, which strikes me as a much better use of resources. More choice and flexibility. The YCC gives you all-round flexibility. You can choose the ride height, either high, if you like a commanding view of the road, or low, for a sportier feel. And you can radically change the look of the car interior whenever you feel like it. There are eight exchangeable seat pad options to choose from, everything from dark brown leather, linen, and wool boucle, to a shimmering yellow-green embroidered seat pad. Each of these has a matching carpet, also easy to swap over, for a whole range of styles inspired by home interior design. No need to trade in your car just because you've grown tired of its color scheme, says Maria Agla, the color and trim designer of the YCC. Who does that? Minimal maintenance. We want cars to make life easier for their owners, not complicate things for them, says project manager Eva Lisa Anderson. So the YCC has made user car care about as easy as it can get. The only time I ever open up my bonnet is when I need to fill up with windscreen washer fluid, says Tatiana Butovic Tem, YCC communications manager. So we asked ourselves whether you should have to open the bonnet just to do that. We realized that it could just as easily be done from the side of the car. That is why the YCC has two capless ball valve filling points like those used for racing cars beside the door on the driver's side. One for petrol, the other for washer fluid. No fumbling with filler caps or bonnet latches. With the windscreen washer fluid filler outside the car, no bonnet was needed, at least of the conventional type. Volvo service staff are the only ones who ever need to access the engine when the time comes for routine service. When service is due, the car automatically notifies a service center of your choice. The service center then suggests an appointment time for you that you can confirm or reject. The YCC also carries out its own diagnostic checks at regular intervals and notifies your service center if anything needs attention. This also ensures that any spare parts or materials will be there when they are needed. To us, service is more than just mechanical maintenance. By pressing the Car Care button on the control panel, you can also book your car in for valeting inside and out. Maybe that's valeting inside and out, says Eva Lisa Anderson. Color and design. I, I'm sorry, it's just terribly unfortunate to have your color and trim designer be one typo away from being called Maria Ugly. I know that's a cheap shot, and I'm terribly sorry. Um, but also, why is there fake grass in the floor mats? Let's read on and perhaps they'll tell us. The YCC has two capless ball valve filling points like those used for racing cars beside the door on the driver's side. One for petrol, the other for washer fluid. 
I like this idea full stop. Gas caps are annoying, and we should have come up with a better solution by now. Although my newest car is now 10 years old, so maybe we have. Those of you with vehicles produced in the space year 2023, or newer, do they still come with gas caps? Let us know in the comments. With the windscreen washer fluid filler outside the car, no bonnet was needed, at least of the conventional type. Volvo service staff are the only ones who ever need to access the engine when the time comes for routine service. This is where I think we get a bit into pander territory, as it feels like we're being told that women don't want to or have the ability to service their cars should it ever be needed. Not to mention the whole right to repair thing that's become a cause celebre in the more recent years, and quite a valid cause it is too. Also, there's a bizarre sort of implied optimism that their cars will never break down, which I know Volvos are reliable, but still. The car is finished in easy clean paint. This behaves rather like the coating on a nonstick pan in that it gives you cancer. Dirt finds it very f <laughs> Dirt finds it very hard to cling on in the first place, and if it does, it washes off very easily. The interchangeable seat covers and carpets are also washable. The YCC's tires are of the run flat type. Even after a puncture, the car can be driven to a service center or a suitable place to stop. Easy to park. Parallel parking assistance is a function both males and females requested. In the YCC, this is a two-stage system. When you need to park between two other cars, but first want to make sure there will be enough space, you press the parking assistance button once for the space check function. If the system says yes, you can then select the auto park function by pressing the same button again. The car helps you with the steering to maneuver you into the parking space, but you control the accelerator, brakes, and gear shift. Auto Park streamlines your parallel parking with flare. Engine and transmission. The YCC is prepared for a low emission 215 brake horsepower 5 cylinder PZEV engine, which is partial zero emissions vehicle engine, with an integrated starter generator, ISG. This, like other Volvo PZEV engines, complies with the toughest emission standards in certain American green states, such as California which is still called green despite the fact that it's frequently on fire. ISG has several advantages. It prevents unnecessary idling because the engine can be shut off automatically when waiting at places like traffic lights. It comes to life again as soon as the driver presses the accelerator. It also provides extra torque at low revs, which means maximum power right from the start. And the ISG provides a 60 volt power supply, giving scope for even greater user convenience. The YCC has a six-speed power shift gearbox. You can either choose the fully automatic mode or use the controls on the steering column to change gear. Power shift means that the car, in effect, has dual wet clutch transmission technology, ensuring that your gear changes are always at the right revs. This makes for smoother driving and lower fuel consumption. The YCC's tires are of the run-flat type. Even after a puncture, the car can be driven to a service center or a suitable place to stop. Run flats are terrible. Please stop putting them on cars. It's not that difficult to design spare space into a vehicle, and in the words of Makem or Clancy, As the man said when his wife ran away and the hen stopped laying, and the second tragedy was worse than the first. Press information. Your concept car. Bold but elegant exterior. The YCC is a car of many contrasts. It is functional and user-friendly, yet sporty and emotional. Its exterior styling strikes a balance between all these qualities. That is why the YCC has a low front end and long rear window for an excellent view all round. Bumpers and lower side sections covered with a tough, durable material in contrast to its suave upper body work. Muscular shoulders and catwalk. Okay. Gullwing doors. Headlights with an ethereal liquid quality. An excellent view from the driver's seat was high on the YCC wish lists. In many cars, it can be difficult to see all four corners. This can make a car hard to park or to pilot through tight spots. But in the YCC, it is easy to see. <laughs> That's difficult to say. <laughs> but in the YCC, it is easy to see where the car starts and where it ends, because the front end is low, the fenders have been brought into sight, and the traditional Volvo V on the bonnet section has been inverted. The effect is reminiscent of the Volvo P1800, giving the car a sporty look and the driver full command of the situation ahead. The equivalent has been achieved at the rear end, where the rear window extends almost all the way to where the car ends. 
The lines of the YCC's catwalk give it a look which is muscular and elegant at the same time. It was important to combine beautiful flowing lines with a muscular look. The strong front end gives a sense of speed. The line flows over the front wheel, then drops towards the rear, says Anna Rosen, who designed the exterior. It is functional and user-friendly, yet sporty and emotional. Somehow I doubt that a hybrid with only 215 horsepower and a rather lifted driving position causes sporty emotions. One of my earlier vehicles was a Honda Civic Hybrid, which, while rather good on fuel and, to be fair, only had about half the power, could not get out of its own way. Not that I'm saying you need 500 horsepower to have fun in a car, it does help, but balancing weight and power are absolutely critical. The effect is reminiscent of the Volvo P1800. Ah, no. Sorry. Chameleon with variable ride height. The YCC is as big as the Volvo S60. Its variable ride height function enables it to be raised or lowered either when driving or when parked. It is a car which combines sportiness and robustness, and the exterior design strives for a balance between these characteristics. Its skid plates emphasize the functionality. Its bumpers and lower side sections are made of a tough, durable material for an enhanced functional feel. This effect is balanced by the streamlined beauty of the body panels. They have been finished in chameleon, a flip color change, paint for an iridescent, silky look. Depending on the light, the exterior flip color, chameleon, changes from green to gold or blue to yellow. We chose a paint which would bring out the lines of the car to best advantage, says Maria Ugla, the color and trim designer. Ice effect. The head and taillights are important elements of the YCC's styling. The headlights are lenses of transparent thermoplastic which project the lights from banks of LEDs. The effect is that of light emanating from a block of ice. No bulbs or LEDs visible, just light. The rear light clusters enhance the characteristic look of this Volvo. Here, the red section flows seamlessly into the yellow. The high-level brake light is at the top edge of the rear window. If the driver brakes hard, the red area grows bigger. If the driver has to brake extra hard, the brake light pulsates. Gullwing doors of short wingspan. The YCC was designed with wide side door openings for better display of the car interior, for easier backseat loading and unloading, to make it an easier car to get in and out of. You know. you know. The headlights are lenses of transparent thermoplastic, which project the light from banks of LEDs. The effect is that of light emanating from a block of ice. No bulbs or LEDs visible, just light. I'm glad they got around to implementing this concept in a modified sense with the Thor's Hammer DRLs that debuted with the 2015 XC90. Incidentally, yes, I know the hammer's technically called Mjolnir, but they called it Thor's Hammer in the marketing bumps. Anyway, I think it's a great looking DRL design, nearly as iconic, and actually more attractive than the first Audi designs that came out shortly after the YCC did. That statement actually applies both to the Thor's Hammer. It was originally written as intended for the Thor's Hammer DRLs, but these are also excellent and would have done just as well on their vehicle models. Eye-catching gullwing doors of short wingspan were the perfect answer for the YCC. When closed, the gullwing door extends only as far as the bottom of the painted body sections, which means that it extends only 60 centimeters out from the car when opened, less space than many conventional car doors need to open fully. As the gullwing door opens upwards, the sill section below it opens out and down. The advantages are that there is no high sill to climb over and that the surface presented is always a clean one. Another advantage of the door solution is that the B pillar has been moved further back, further enhancing the driver's view of the road. Press information. Your concept car, a personal living room with everything you want within reach. I hate those impersonal living rooms. The YCC was designed to suit the individual. You choose the information and settings you want. You choose how you like the interior to look and how high you like to ride. Some of the interior benefits in the YCC are ErgoVision, ergonomics plus optimum line of vision in a patented concept, easy to get in and out of, you know. You know. airy interior characterized by an extreme sense of space, everything within reach, multi-purpose storage, light interior with honest materials, yes, every material sourced from Abraham Lincoln himself, 
more a living room than a lounge or a cockpit with modern furnishing fabrics. Choice of eight upholstery and carpet styles, easily switched to match mood, season, or trends. When the gullwing door opens up, the door sill rotates down, making it easier for driver and passengers to get in and out of the car. The drop-down sill has a dual function, besides allowing a smaller wingspan for the gullwing door. It makes for easier entry and exit, and it also presents a clean interior surface. No risk of brushing against grimy car exterior surfaces and soiling your clothes. More a living room than a lounge or a cockpit. Oh, excellent! That means there'll be a chair with some laundry that needs folding, an accent lamp or two, an ashtray, despite the fact that nobody smoked in the house in decades, and a corner that's perpetually got a bit more dust than the rest of the room because the robot vacuum doesn't do oblique angles well. Marketers. Inside the car, too, interior designer Cindy Charwick wanted to improve access and comfort for the driver. When you get into the car, the side support in the seat will have been lowered for you. The whole seat will also be in its lowest and furthest back position, and both steering wheel and car body will be raised. All these settings add up to maximum freedom of movement before you close the door. Then the side supports in the seat will return to their comfortable, cocooning driving position. Personalized Driving Position A key ambition in developing the YCC was to ensure that the driver, regardless of height, would be able to sit correctly when driving and have the right line of vision, too. The result was ErgoVision, patent pending, ergonomics and optimum line of sight in one system. Your whole body is scanned at the dealership, then this data is used to define a driving position just for you. This is stored in digital form on your key unit. Once you get into the driver's seat and dock your key on the center console, the seat, steering wheel, pedals, head restraint, and seat belt will all be adjusted automatically to suit your personal build. The result is a sound driving position with the best line of vision for you. If you want to alter the stored position, you can change the settings of the various car components in the system, then store that set of data on your key unit. The system will warn you if your line of vision is wrong by means of the lenticular hologram, an eye symbol displayed on the A pillar between windscreen and door. The YCC has other features designed to make your driving posture as comfortable as possible for trouble-free driving. The design philosophy was that, wherever the car can be made to adapt itself to suit the driver, this provision should be made. Because the height of the driver's shoe heels may differ from one day to the next, the driver heel rest was made fully adjustable. And the head restraint has been adapted to cater for hairstyles like ponytails. Because the height of the driver's shoe heels may differ from one day to the next, the driver heel rest was made fully adjustable. And the head restraint has been adapted to cater for hairstyles like ponytails. Ah yes, I'm sure that'll exceed the expectations of the male consumer. As a male, I'm often frustrated by the lack of adjustable heel rests for when I wear stilettos one day and pumps the next. Space and convenience. The interior design of the YCC is a balance between the driver's need for as much space as possible and the need to have all the most important things within easy reach. It was all part of the aim of making life easier. The cabin environment has been designed so that everything you need is at your fingertips, and your surroundings need to make you feel good, too, says interior designer Cindy Charwick. Inside the car, she has echoed the flowing lines of the exterior styling. The instrument panel is S-shaped, adding to the sense of space and air in the cabin. And to reinforce the floating, hovering impression the exterior gives, with its color change paint and the lift of its gullwing doors, the front seat mountings have been moved inwards, out of sight. The seats look as though they are hovering above the floor. Elegance is built into other interior features, too. The ambient lighting follows the lines of the car at the side, the ventilation is concealed, and the roof lining between the glazed moonroof is a shimmering star ceiling produced through a unique material made by fiber optics. Controls and Instruments The YCC is packed with smart technology, but the technology has not been allowed to complicate matters for the driver. So the instrument panel is clean cut, simple and restrained. But those there are, are close to your line of sight. The gear levers are by the steering wheel. All non-essentials have been removed. What you see is your speed, how far you can drive before you need to refuel, and how to find your way. In other words, a speedometer, a distance indicator, and a navigation system. All other information can be accessed using the control panel alongside the steering wheel. Everything is easy to reach, easy to understand, and easy to operate. Storage. The YCC has storage options in new places. Moving the gear levers up by the steering wheel and making the electronic parking brake automatic has freed up all the space between the front seats. 
an ideal place for keeping things you might want on the journey. Drivers should not have to worry about things like mobiles ringing or where to find some small change in a hurry. Here there are both shallow compartments and deep ones, with room for things like your notebook computer, handbag, parking money, drinks, keys, CDs, and mobile phone. And the main function of the rear seat is not that of carrying passengers. It is for carrying things, because that is what the target group mostly use it for. Here there is all the room you want for briefcases, carrier bags, and bags full of sports gear. The rear seat is actually two separate fold-down seats. They are rather like cinema seats, so they spring back up when not in use, to make even more space for storage. And the compartment on the back of the front seat is actually a removable compact briefcase. The boot is big enough for a set of golf clubs. Honest materials and light. Spaciousness and light are the key impressions conveyed by the interior. Sitting in the YCC, you get a strong sense of being in a living room. The color and trim is strongly influenced by home interior design. Let's bring the living room into the car. Let's use materials we have in the home. Honest materials, not obscured by coats of shiny enamel, was the way Maria Ugla, the designer responsible for color and trim, felt about it. The YCC is exceptionally light in the inside, rather like a modern living room with big windows and skylights. Scandinavian light was the real inspiration. Here, the interior surface materials set the tone and the light spectrum. Specially selected to avoid weighing down the interior in any way, they reinforce and amplify the space within the car. All the horizontal surfaces are of laminated bleached oak, augmented by all functional surfaces in brushed aluminum. Another innovation is the use of pale plastic sheeting behind a transparent layer in places like the center of the instrument panel. Plastic used to real advantage. The speaker grills combine white and silver in a random pattern. The side panels, doors, and rear seats have been tied together through a light eggshell color. The compartment on the back of the front seat is actually a removable compact briefcase. I can definitely see that not getting passed along to a second owner either by accident or intent. I kind of like the idea, but at the same time, wouldn't you have a briefcase anyway if you had decided that was within your needs? Decor to match your taste. Just as light-colored walls in a living room focus attention on the furniture, all the pale surfaces in the YCC mean your eye is caught at once by the seats and carpets. This is where the real scope for individuality comes into play. The chance to alter your car interior according to trends, personal taste, or style. A range of eight seat pad options with matching carpets means that you can decorate your car to match your personal taste. Swapping them over is quick and easy, and they are easy to care for. Some are machine washable, others dry clean only. A range so wide that everyone can find a personal favorite. The options are dark brown leather, a traditional upholstery option in soft leather complemented by a short pile carpet of tufted linen, black brown woven leather, a bold sporty option complemented by a multicolored carpet of tufted linen with orange, gray green, beige, wine, and yellow green elements. Beige linen accented with lime green highlights. A more subdued style, complemented by a boucle based wool and linen carpet with lime green stripes of tufted linen. Checked Woolen Boucle. A retro fabric in black and lime yellow which flirts with the 1950s and modern interior design trends, complemented by a carpet of black woolen felt. Red Wool. A thick, warm covering. The carpet is made of the same type of material. Cream felted wool, a more restrained choice, complemented by a carpet of woven boucle with green and gray accents. Gray nubuck, an excellent, an elegant option complemented by a tufted deep pile carpet. Shimmering pale yellow with embroidered flowers, the least conventional option, complemented by a boucle based dark brown carpet with strands of pale yellow linen. All the materials would work equally well in a living room. Many of them have never before been used in cars. Each seat top option has its own label, reinforcing the link with home interiors. Somehow. Some are machine washable, others dry clean only. I can imagine the scene here. Oh dear, where are you going? Ah, I have to take the car seats to the dry cleaners. Incidentally, can you imagine the strange looks you'd get from the dry cleaner when you get out of the car, take the seat cushion off and say, Hello, please clean this. No, I don't mind waiting. I don't have anywhere else to sit. All the materials would work equally well in a living room. 
Okay, uh, New Bucks really more for shoes, first off, at least as far as I'm concerned, and they thought of a shimmering pale yellow sofa with embroidered flowers and a boucle brown carpet with bits of yellow linen interspersed is so damn 60s it hurts, and that's pushing it even for the 60s. Your concept car. A project with women in the driver's seat. The female perspective was at the core of the YCC project from the outset, and that was exactly the way Volvo Car Corporation wanted it to be. A concept car project started, inspired, and managed by women. One in which women always had the final say. Camilla Palmertz, project manager. Our aim is that you should feel great in this car. Camilla Palmertz, born 1967, has been with the YCC project from the time when the idea arose. She joined Volvo in 1995, and her positions with the company have included responsibility for the biomechanical aspects of crash test analysis. Her past projects have included the inflatable curtain safety system and the development of the pregnant crash test ducky. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that sentence was in there. It's an entirely valid and, and, and deeply honorable thing to have created because I, I totally get the need for it, but I just hit pregnant crash test dummy and was not, oh, not prepared for that. I'm sorry. Uh, storage solutions were a key aspect of the YCC project for Camilla Palmertz. She thinks it is important to be able to carry a lot in the backseat of a car and that it should be easy to load and unload. The YCC's gullwing doors and fold-down back seats have been instrumental in meeting this requirement. Eva-Lisa Anderson, Project Manager A car is a very technical product. Still, your buy is based on emotions. Eva-Lisa Anderson, born 1958, undertook the joint leadership of the project with Camilla Palmertz. She has been with Volvo since 1985. Immediately before the YCC project, she was project director, concept, for a Volvo model still in development. As she sees it, a car should make life easier, not more complicated. For her, storage and ergonomics have been particularly important aspects of the YCC's development. She is also proud of the fact that the YCC has successfully combined sportiness with elegance. Elna Holmberg, Technical Project Manager A car is your choice. Therefore, it is very important that you can put your demands and wishes into it. Dr. Elna Holmberg, born 1960, was responsible for the technical development of the YCC. Her previous work at Volvo has included aerodynamics and chassis development for new models. For her, the most important aspect in the development of the YCC was giving high priority to functions which are important to the car and finding simple, smart solutions. She is particularly pleased with the entry solutions and the ErgoVision system, both of which she sees as being critical to the YCC's individuality and strong customer focus. Maria Vidal Christensen, Design Manager. We are convinced that this car also, definitely, appeals to men. Maria Vidal Christensen, born 1959, joined Volvo in 1986. In this project, she has held overall administrative responsibility for the design team of 25 staff. Throughout the project, she went to great lengths to draw on all the concept car expertise at Volvo to ensure the success of the YCC. She sees the idea of offering a range of interchangeable seat tops and carpets as the most extraordinary thing about the YCC. A whole new dimension for the car industry and an idea which extends our conception of what a car is. We are convinced that this car also definitely appeals to men. This is the only point I'm going to take issue with in the individual bios section simply because in this it would come down to a question of proper marketing. As this press kit is written, there are no features that appeal directly to men as a specific demographic, and a few things that, while not actively off-putting, would likely at least raise an eyebrow. In particular, the heels and ponytail-specific design features, maybe the handbag storage, although that could be pretty easily repositioned, and some of the initially offered seat top and carpet options. Tatiana Buto God, this name's difficult. Tatiana Butovich Tem, Communications Manager. Oh, here's some irony. Uh, the hallmark of a good idea is that people ask why this hasn't been done before. Before having responsibility for PR and project information, I'm not saying her name again because I have to re-record it four or five times, born 1961, has coordinated communication within the project itself and looked at the features from a communicative aspect. Another task is to make sure the YCC gets shown to the world and the reactions collected and brought back to Volvo Car Corporation. 
She is particularly pleased with the auto park system that makes your life easier and makes you look good at the same time. She has worked at Volvo since 1989, prior to the YCC in safety communication and as a managing editor. Lena Eklund, Deputy Technical Project Manager. In the YCC, we have retained our focus on customer needs, not compromised it in favor of flashy technical solutions. Lena Eklund, born 1962, shared responsibility for the technical side of the project and for coordinating the design engineering team with Elna Holmberg. She has been with Volvo since 1986, working as a design engineer and in project management. She considers the real strength of the YCC project has been that it remained focused on customer needs. Frequently, the solutions needed were relatively simple, such as adapting the head restraint to accommodate a ponytail and the eye symbol to indicate optimum line of vision. A driving force in Lena's work is the idea that ingenuity and simplicity go hand in hand. Anna Rosen, Exterior Designer We wanted to create a beautiful car, not brutal, but tough. Anna Rosen, born 1976, was responsible for the YCC's exterior design. She aimed throughout to make it just as appealing as possible. The pragmatic elements were there from the outset, so Anna's task was to combine them with a look that would make the YCC irresistible. In her view, design must arouse emotions, because buying a car always involves an emotional response. Anna Rosen joined Volvo in 2002. Before the YCC project, she worked with Volvo Design Strategy. Cynthia Charwick, Interior Designer The first impression you get of the car is a feeling of grace and space. Cynthia Charik, born 1957, has previously worked on the interior design of both concept cars and production models. She first started work at Volvo in 1981. Key objectives in her work on the YCC were to free up more space in the car for storage and to make it as convenient and uncomplicated as possible. The fact that this was such a strongly customer-oriented project, based on what women said they wanted, added a whole new dimension for her. Maria Ugla, Color and Trim Designer one way of being in control is that you have the opportunity to influence your environment. And today's entry in the Tautology Club motto. Maria Agla, born 1962, has worked at Volvo since 2001. Her past projects include color and trim for the new S40 and V50, and work at the concept stage for other models in development. Her responsibilities in the YCC project included that of ensuring harmony between the exterior styling and the car interior, through a judicious choice of colors, materials, and lighting. I wanted to achieve a light interior in the Scandinavian tradition, using honest materials and unexpected solutions. One very important aspect of the project was to make the YCC more personal and individual. Here, the customer has the choice of eight switchable upholstery options, each with its own carpet to match, including materials more normally associated with home interiors like wool and linen. For some of the skepticism I've expressed so far, I do actually really like the majority of choices made and the general ideas behind the Your Concept car. The name is not one of the parts that I like. It's quite practical, although a bit more aspirational than the usual Volvo concepts, and wouldn't have been all that surprising to see this make it into production in the late 2000s when one examines some of the models that came along in that period. It would have made a compelling city runabout in its way and actually might have been a good utilitarian boxy, or dare I say, flat pack esque competitor to the harsh angularity of the Cadillac ELR if they had made some light modifications to the powertrain. Variable height suspension to improve fuel economy and driving dynamics wasn't a new concept per se, but similarly wasn't widespread, so I can appreciate the inclusion of that, although the lifting functionality to improve speed bump clearance might be a bit of a false feature as the vehicle hardly appears to be competing with Lamborghini for ground clearance minimums. I am inherently distrusting of park assist programs, especially those which rely on driver throttle inputs while handling the maneuvering, because it strikes me as providing more opportunities for failure than success if someone's foot slips on the pedal or something like that. There's probably programming to prevent that, I'd still prefer a full push to park system or just parking sensors and a 360 camera. Or better still, the old one arm over the passenger seat and looking over the shoulder routine that leverages the wonderful capabilities of, as Dr. Kennevel calls it, the Mark I eyeball. 
As previously stated, the scan your body at the dealer to get your custom seat profile thing seems quite gimmicky and needlessly complex, as does the leveraging of cutting-edge North Korean stamp technology to make sure sight lines are accurate. Maybe this was just a plot to get the Supreme Leader to buy one. The whole color-changing paint is 50-50. I've rarely, if ever, seen it executed well in reality, but that's such a minor thing that it's not worth it worrying about in the grand scheme of things, because again, if it had made it to production, you likely would have been offered a choice of colors, just like you get a choice of seat covering options. I do think it would be a little bit harder to just change out your paint job. If you meet the expectations of women, you exceed the expectations of men. While I know they covered it a little bit more later in drilling down that phrase, it's such a stupid generalization, no matter how you slice it, and I suspect would be revealed as doubly so if you conducted a sort of mid-range survey between men and women just on automotive preferences. As with so many things, the devil is in the details, but as far as a raison d'etre goes, this would imply that previously automobiles have consistently or universally failed to meet women's expectations, which I also don't think is the case. As previously alluded, there's something that continues to bug me about both the lack of any driver accessibility to the engine compartment with the implication that women are either disinterested in or incapable of performing their own vehicle maintenance. It's the kind of sexism we just don't need in this modern world or the modern world of 20 years ago. Similarly, and this may be an unwarranted logical jump, but the instant that I see those unpainted rubberized panels at potential impact areas, I'm reminded of the reason that the Citroen Cactus has them, at least as was explained to me by our very German decision-making cultural studies professor, that being that the French don't give a merde about their voitures and are thus inevitably going to run them into things, and this would help with resale value down the line having the, the rubberized bits, to which I get the feeling that someone very cheekily said, and this is not my opinion, this is just, this, this is just supposition, well, women don't like parking because it's tricky, so let's put some easily replaceable panels in there for when they inevitably do. Which is, again, the kind of patronizing we don't need in 2004 or 2024. Perhaps, time for another top-year reference, someone had this bit in mind, despite the fact that it wasn't going to come along for another 10 years or so. No, 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 don't tell me it says next, don't worry chaps, we'll let her drive it off, but we won't let her park it. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Welcome to 1950! <laughs> Finish! The car's gone away! This one may be a reach, but I also don't understand why there's this mental model that a car should always resemble some other nominally more compelling space, and why the first thing that's chosen there for a woman's concept car is the living room. I mean, yes, there are even more patronizing locations within the home that they could have chosen, but what's wrong with a car feeling like, oh, I don't know, a car inside? Or perhaps a fine art museum? The interior of the giant pink sea snail. A circuit board from a ZX Spectrum. The composite surface of all 110 of the Messier objects. We seem to have developed this obsession with making spaces feel like they're some other, different space that isn't its originally intended one, for which I partially blame Howard Schultz, not the creator of the Peanuts comic strip, and we'll leave you with this brief scene from Third Rock from the Sun to demonstrate just how silly it is. How did we live before this? <laughs> you know, it's tough to think that in thousands of years of human civilization, no one ever thought of this. Well, it just took fresh eyes to see it. <laughs> what do you think? I think I found my soulmate. No, what do you think of this? This? Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> Blasphemer! No, no, no! That is false. We're so cutting edge, it just confuses him. People have to be eased into this. Cutting edge, you just moved the kitchen into the living room. Uh -huh. <laughs> we haven't made any improvements at all. 
This is just two less good versions of the same old room. Ah, God, we're idiots. So move it all back. Well, anyway, brings us to the end of this week's very ranty video. Thank you for watching, and a few quick updates. I have succumbed to that basest of human emotions, greed, and if you have enjoyed this video or my other content, well, now there's a way to help keep me in the aforementioned whiskey and graphics cards and electricity and tea and so on. Of course, there is com the complete opposite of obligation to do any such thing, and if you're watching this or any of my other original content videos, I do consider your attention and comments more than sufficient, but I have to keep the lights on such as it is. Uh, sometime in the next few weeks, I will start put back to posting old race movies and newsreels, and there's the first part of a probably six or seven video series on the history of sports car racing in the offing as well, with part one covering the first half of the 20th century before we move into more of a year, decade in review type format once the World Sports Car Championship gets going in 1953. Normal, sarcastifactual racing content will resume next week, with these videos probably moving to the Wednesday slot as I get back into a better routine and new pro productivity flows. I really like the word portmanteau that I came up with of sarcastifactual. Anyway, I'm also working further on the scripting and ideation for a companion channel for all the other random video ideas I have had, such as some travel logs and a series with my father that's all about whiskey, but that's a bit further off. Okay, for this week's call to action not featuring the three sacred words of YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. For all of those of you that don't actually ever stay around for these. Make sure to check up on your older relative's health and maybe get a second opinion on their medical records. Um, I had a pretty close call this past week with one of my grandparents due to some negligence on her doctor's part for something that should have been caught at least a year ago, but um, worth thinking about. With that, I have but to say, as always, thank you for your time this evening, or whenever and wherever you are watching, and to wish you all a good night and a good tomorrow.